While we're standing, we're going to read in our Bibles from Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. We're going to read and pray. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Repent means he will not change his mind. He said, and shall he not do what he has spoken? Shall he not make it good? Father, we thank you because you are not the son of man to lie. What you have told us you will do. We give you praise because of your goodness, because of your kindness. We well, thank you for the faithfulness of your person and the integrity of your word. Today we rejoice in our hope that you are faithful, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You know, I, I, when I was praying, I meant to lead you in prayer, not pray. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's read again. He said, God is not a man. That what? Can you give me the, maybe the NLT translation, NLT of message? so that we can absorb it in an easy way. He says, God is not a man that should lie. He's not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? It's a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for carrying it through. Thank you for promising and doing, hallelujah. Thank you for promising and doing. Like to like a to mambana cantalia, and to a case I know tatali mora ukai, wuri na kwali sai lupatwa, and to get to mopondi kunanaya, and a fully get to reata, and a duka aliki te, let to kai to mande. Thank you for promising and doing it. Oh, to the country, get the dance. They will pray. Amen. I want to say something before we just close the prayer. The reason why this is very powerful is that this is why it's very powerful. This is why it's very powerful. Is it has he ever promised and not carried it to pass? The only reason why God says this is this: when you are in a situation in your life when you feel as if it's not happening, you will go back here and say, He has always done what he has said. Yes. This scripture is for you that feel as if hey. What's going on? Remember, God is not human to change his mind. Yes, sir. Has he ever failed? Has he ever spoken and failed to ask? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? You are going to pray. Thank you for everything you've told me about this year will happen. Yes. Because you will carry it through. Let's go ahead and pray. 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 be amplified in Jesus name we pray amen. that amen can be louder in Jesus name we pray amen. the last prayer we're going to pray this morning is complete victories Ooh, complete you. testimonies amen I sense that their testimonies are halfway we are praying for what complete what? testimonies he says as he ever promised hey. and will not carry true hey. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Complete testimonies. Nicola Pate Costani get on the Messiah. Nicola Pate Costani get 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 the Messiah. In yes, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I prophesy to everyone that will receive it. Yes. That the rest of this year complete testimony. Amen. I said complete testimony. Amen. 
I said complete testimonies. In a way that you do not understand complete testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seats. Hallelujah. We have a God who never fails. Don't stand up, it's make it longer. But I want the choir to sing from there. They can, the choir can join me. But you are going to clap in the apostolic way. You know apostolic way? Not, you know, we have a God. No, 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 no. You have to go back. Praise God. How many of you went to Assemblies of God? Uh-huh. So, you know, uh, we have a God who never fails. We have a God. Just standing that number 23, verse 20, verse 21. Number 23, 2021. 20, Go ahead. 
NLT, please. Just something to encourage you. It says, listen, I've received a command to bless. You took it out? It says, listen, I've... It says, listen, I've received a command to bless. And God has blessed. And I cannot... My God. My God. Breaking news, nothing can reverse the blessing on your life. Praise God. Some of you maybe things are going in a funny way in business, it's going in a funny way. Remind yourself, I am blessed and nothing can reverse it. Verse 21, see what it says. No misfortune in his plan for Jacob. There's no plan for misfortune. No trouble in suffer Israel. For the Lord thy God is with them. He has been proclaimed their king. If you need to shout, I receive it. Somebody say praise. Somebody say praise. Somebody say praise. Say, this is my story. You can have your sins. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you didn't attend apostolic churches, assemblies of God, apostolic church, Christ apostolic church, you know, we, we need to update, we need to update your SIM card. Praise God. Hallelujah. Once in a while, you know, those churches, there's no form, you know, you know, there's no form in. You know, <laughs> there's no form in. Praise God. All right, let's go into the Word of God. So this month we have been teaching on family, marriage, and relationships. That's been our teaching this month. And I'm going to continue um, in that way this month. First service was very instructive. And um, this would also be. So this teaching this week, I'm talking about building intimacy in your relationships and building intimacy in your marriage. You know, if you want a title, you can call it how to become best friends with your partner. Hallelujah. Let's read quickly Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 in the maybe message translation or NLT. And we'll also read Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. The Bible says, it's better to have a partner than to go alone. And someone says, why do you keep teaching these things? The reason why we keep teaching God's word is this. Number one, as we teach, we are reminded that's the first thing, because everybody can seem to forget. You know, as I hear these things, even I am teaching, I'm reminded of what I need to do in, within the family context. You know, as we teach, we're reminded. Number two, some of us are going through different places in life, and this will give you some hope. And the third the reason why we teach is that when you listen to mainstream media, mainstream media makes it seem as if everything is wrong with marriage, Everybody's crazy, everybody's useless, you know, that kind of thing. But that's not true. I know there are challenges when it comes to relationship, but that's not the only narrative there. So we're learning, we're learning, we're learning here and there. Glory to God. And some of you have given up maybe because you're a single parent, maybe because you're divorced, and you're just tired and exhausted. And this is meant to not, in, not condemn you, but give you some hope and just some wisdom about the future. So the Bible says in First Samuel, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9, it says, it's better to have a partner than to go it alone. Share the work, share the wealth. If one falls down, the other helps. But if, no one is, but if there is no one to help, that's tough. The next verse, please. It says, two are better in bed, warming each other. Alone, you will shiver all night. And verse 12, it says, by yourself, you are unprotected. With a friend, with a partner, you can face the worst. Can you round up a third? A tree stranded, a tree, what? Please say it again. A tree stranded rope isn't easily snapped. Praise God. Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. It says, and God said it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper, a companion. And so God formed from the depths of the earth, all the animals of the field, and all the birds of the earth. 
and they brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature was the name. And the man named the cattle, named the birds of the earth. Um, this is verse 18. I'm going very far. Okay. Um, but he didn't find a suitable companion. Yes, let's keep going. But God put the man into a deep sleep. Watch this now. God put a man into a deep sleep and he removed one of his ribs and replaced it with the flesh. Single people, you need to sleep so God can give you a partner. Because the more you are awake, the more you interfere with what God is doing. So sometimes, some say, how do I know I'm sleeping? The way we know you're not sleeping is that you are too worried about getting married. So you need to sleep. The Bible says Adam's wife came when he was sleeping. It says, and God put man into a deep sleep and he slept. And he removed one of his ribs and he replaced it with, um, and he replaced it with flesh. And God used his rib. And when he had taken, and when he had taken it for man to make woman, and presented the woman to the man. Verse, keep going. Then the man said, finally, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, named her woman. For she was made from man. The Bible says this, therefore shall a man leave his mother. Therefore shall a man leave his mother. All the baby men that tied to the moments, to their mother's apron. The Bible says, therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother that means when you're married that you will leave your mother and leave your father and cleave unto your wife so you cannot be saying i prefer my mother's food when you're married he said therefore shall a man leave his mother you can't be paying your mother's food when you're married for your wife's food when you're married praise the lord hallelujah and for late, and I'm saying so because sometimes you have people that say, you don't understand the bond within me and my mom. You know, it says, therefore shall a man leave his mother. You can't be reporting your wife to your mother. Praise the Lord. Therefore shall a man leave his mother. You can't prefer your mother's food over your wife's food. Praise the Lord. Therefore shall a man leave his mother. Praise God. It says, therefore shall a man leave his mother. And for women, and listen, and for women that are praying that their mother-in-law would die before they get married, just remember that one day you will also be a mother. Glory to God. One day you will also be a mother. He says, and therefore shall a woman, he says, therefore shall a man leave his mother and, the, and, his, mo and his father and embrace his wife and the two shall become one. But my emphasis in the, in the next line. It says, and the two of them, and this is where I'm teaching from today, and the two of them, man and his wife, were naked, and they were not ashamed. In another word, another word is to say they were vulnerable. That's another word. They were what? Vulnerable. They were vulnerable. There was no need to hide. So today we're talking about building intimacy in relationship or becoming best friends with your partners. So the first thing is this. Marriage, you know, and I'm saying so because marriage isn't a prison. It's a partnership. Marriage isn't a prison. You know, some people, the way social media and general media talks about marriage, I say, wow, you're going to get married. Oh, bye-bye. You know, welcome to prison. It's going to be horrible and all those, all those kind of things. You know, marriage is not a prison. It's a partnership. You need to remember that. But the key thing is this. The key thing is this. Why is marriage a prison to people? The reason why marriage is a prison is because the marriage is not functioning well. People are in marriages that is not functioning well. There are no perfect marriages, but most people are in marriages that are not functioning well. Let me give an example of marriages that have no intimacy. When you are married and there is no intimacy, your marriage is going to malfunction. There's nothing, there's no, it's going to malfunction. You can't help it. So the Bible says this. So, so when you're in a marriage where there's no intimacy, what happens is this. The first thing is that you guys are meant to be soulmates, and soulmate means that we have mutual interest. We both love to enjoy to do this. We both love to enjoy to do that. We're soulmates. That's what marriage is meant to be. Marriage is meant to be a place where you are naked and you're not ashamed. Your partner can see your nakedness. It can, when I say nakedness, not literal nakedness, and I mean that's part of it. Your partner can see your downside, your not so great spot. Everybody has a part of his life where they struggle with, no matter how perfect you look. Everybody has that kind of person. You know, there are some men that look so handsome in church, but the way they snore. Praise God. They look so good. You know, you, you see them, you see them, they look so good, they look so perfect, but the way they snore. 
Marriage is a place of nakedness. You know, at least the single people never marry a man you can't be vulnerable with. Because you cannot act all your life. You will get tired of acting one day. You're a single person, your boyfriend is coming to see you at 10 o'clock. You're trying to use makeup. For what? Let him come and see the acne on your face. Let's see the pimples. Let him see how your face is without makeup. The reason why is that the rest of your life, he's going to wake up and see that face that way. The major thing is that most people when they're single are acting. And they're hoping that when they become married, they can be authentic. No, sir. If you are acting when you're single, you have to keep acting on your marriage. Or else you're a foster. You have to keep the show on. Praise God. And guys, big ladies that understand your financial states. Date according to your pocket and financial size. And the reason I'm saying so is this. Because you want to impress her, you take the restaurant, you spend 250K, you spend half a million now. Now you're married, what will you be spending? You want her to understand. Don't entice her with someone you cannot keep up with. And some saying things like, oh, all the ladies want, all these things want big, big things. It's because they're looking for girls that are outside your financial range. Look for girls within your financial range. There's a girl for every financial size. And for ladies that want rich people, just remember you attract who you are. Are you rich? Glory to God. So let's, let's just, I'm just come up the talk of vulnerability. Because one of the major things is, is the fact that there's a lot of, you know, sometimes when you are dating or you're single, if people can be authentic, you can sincerely come to a conclusion that this is not the case I want to marry. Because it's obvious that we share different values. And now when you're married, even when you're married, now this is a mistake we make. We think that marriage equals intimacy. Listen to me. You can be married and not intimate. Marriage does not equal intimacy. Because intimacy is not built overnight. Intimacy is built over time. What does it mean to be intimate? What does it mean to be intimate, to be vulnerable? Intimate means to be in an emotionally deep, to have an emotionally deep connection. Where... You feel seen, you feel heard, you feel understood, you feel supported. That's what it means to be intimate. And that is difficult to be. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, and the two of them, man and wife, they were naked. Naked means they were not hiding from one another. And they were not Ashamed. They were naked and they were not ashamed. This is what happens when we don't have when we're not intimate. The first thing that number one, we're meant to be soulmates that have mutual interests. But because we're not intimate in marriage, we move from soulmates and we become what? Roommates. Roommate means that we have similar function. If you went to a school where you had to share rooms, you know, you didn't like or hate your roommate, but you guys had a mutual interest. You step in the same place. You had shared the same fridge. You had similar functions. That's what kept you there. So you move from a soulmate to a roommate and from a roommate to a cellmate. Who is a cellmate? Someone that you are in prison with. Some of us are in pain, but we can't think about it. We are both here. So I'm saying to you that if you're, in a, if you're a cellmate right now, how can you move your marriage to a soulmate? If you are a roommate right now, how can you move your marriage to what a soulmate? So the first thing we want to understand is what intimacy is. What intimacy is. Intimacy means that, and you know why this is very important. Without intimacy, you will not be able to support one another. I will tell you something. I know people, <laughs> without intimacy, you can't be open. I read online recently about a couple 15 years. The man discovered that the 15 years house rent they've been paying, that their landlord was actually their wife. The man discovered that the house they were living in, and they have been praying rent for the past 15 years, that the landlord of the house was a wife. I'm just showing you how secretive marriage can be. And marriage is not designed to work that way. Marriage is designed as a place where we can just be naked, we can just be open. 
See, what does naked and open means? Naked and open means you can follow me and I will support you. Naked and open means I will know your downside. I will not, I will not, I don't necessarily have to accept it, but I will support you. I, there, was, there was a story that, you know, I was reading. It was when the husband died that the wife realized that her husband was living on debt. That he had lost his money about two years ago before he died. And it was the loss of money that gave him high blood pressure that ultimately led to his death. And when he died, he had left the family in $7.5 million debt. And the woman said, the man wasn't working. She said, where will I start from? And the reason why, you wonder, why didn't he talk? The reason why is that if there's no intimacy, I will not be able to talk. I will not be able to talk because I'm afraid you will judge me. I'm afraid that will you cover me? Intimacy means you know I'm naked. Instead of you to expose my nakedness, you cover me. The Bible says, and they were naked, and they were what? Not ashamed. He said they were naked, and they were not ashamed. So without intimacy, you cannot empathize. Without intimacy, you cannot be open and safe. You can't be open and safe. So the, one of the key things we need to know that intimacy is not automatic because you're married. No, sir. It's not. It's something we build. It's something we build over time. It's something we build. Do we have my cooker on right now? Can we? Is it oil? Is it on? Yeah. Should we not get the sister to do this? I don't want them to burn down the house. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's go back to the issue of intimacy. So what does intimacy mean? So, so intimacy means, intimacy means, see, for all of you that are single, for all of you that are single, you need to make sure you're not distracting me. Yeah. So for all of you that are single, intimacy does not mean excitement. It's not like, ah, he called me, we spoke for three hours. No, it's a deep, deep connection. That's what intimacy is. It's to know that intimacy in marriage and relationship is to know that there's someone that if nobody's there, will be there for me. And at the root of all of us out that want marriage and relationship, that's exactly what you want. But the thing about intimacy is this. Intimacy does not come because you're married. It doesn't come because you're married. You, you can't just say, um, I'm married now, we're intimate. No. Intimacy is not built overnight. It's built over time. I don't know if you get that. Intimacy is not built overnight it's built over time the bible says and the two of them shall become what one you know why listen the two of them shall what become become is a process not a one-day job he said the two of them shall become it's a, it's, it's it takes time to become the reason why is that we have different backgrounds we have different values we have different tastes we have different things he says and the two of them shall become Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You can have sex and not be intimate. You can be married and not be intimate. So the question this morning is that how exactly, is it warm right now? Do you be in intimacy? I want to show you this quickly. This is simple. They just want to fry plantain. Yeah, I want it to be here. Yeah. They want to fry plantain. So just dip the plantain inside. Let's see what goes on. Just this hand is okay for me, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the, it's not hot. It's, I need it to be very hot. So you have to take it back so I can be hot. Yeah. Praise God. You need to take it back. You need to, you need to take it back so I can, yeah. I know, I know what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reaction I want. All right, so let's, because of time. So we're going back to our message on intimacy. So how do I be, so number one, intimacy. So the first thing is this, how do I be in intimacy? Number one, for you to be in intimacy, so intimacy is that, intimacy is this, that I want to be vulnerable. For you to be that intimacy, the first decision is that, the first thing is this, it's a decision to trust and be vulnerable. The reason why is that if you want someone else to be vulnerable with you, can you be vulnerable yourself? Let me say this to you quickly here. 
families where your parents were vulnerable, you will enter into relationships to be blended to be vulnerable. But families where you didn't come from vulnerable parents, you know what happens? When you enter a relationship, you'll find it very difficult to be vulnerable. And the reason why is that we all grow by modeling. Sometime, uh, you know, this actress came to talk to me and she was talking to me about how she wanted to get married and the right people were not coming up. And I asked her, I said, what exactly do you want in marriage? She said, I want a man that can just be vulnerable with me and all of those kind of things. And I said, that's wonderful. So I asked her, I said, are you vulnerable? She said, oh yeah, 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 I'm very vulnerable. But from the way she was talking, I could discern that she wasn't vulnerable. So I began to say, ask her five questions to show if she was vulnerable. By the fifth question, I asked her, do you still think you're vulnerable? She said, I'm not vulnerable. I said, that's the thing. You attract who you are. If you're not vulnerable, you cannot attract a vulnerable person. And I'm saying it to you today because everybody says, I want someone that can see me for who I am and accept me for who they are. But you, can you accept somebody else for who they are? So the first step of vulnerability is for you to choose to be vulnerable. Someone says, I've been vulnerable before and it hurts me. Listen to me. If you have that feeling, you'll put yourself in a love cage. You are in a love prison. You have allowed your experience of the past to put you in bars. Are you there? And this is what it looks like. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see that little shh? Did you see that? That's fine for me. Did that shh? The point is that the plantain and the oil, you will hear, oh, I'm not sure if I can hear, is it shh still? I don't know what you call that sound in English. The question is that, this is the question I want to ask you. What is wrong? Is it the oil or the plantain? No. The process of coming together causes the friction. But when the plantain stays in the fire for a long time, it stops making noise. The friction you are having is because you are coming together for the first time. It's meant to happen. But if you can stay for a long time, if you can stay for a long time, there will be peace and tranquility. That's why in marriages, the first two to five years are the most difficult. Is the shh period. You know what I'm saying, so? This generation is so impatient. Any small thing, I'm out. Any small thing, I'm out. Any small thing, let's break up. That's the problem I have with serial daters. What are serial daters? People that when they are single, they dated 10 girls. You are practicing divorce. We don't date for dating sake, oh. We date with intention and purpose. Thank you, I'm, I'm good. We date with intention and purpose. So, I want to ask you, you need to ask yourself, in your dating relationship, are you in the shh state? In your marriage, are you in the what? Shh state. Or any small thing, I'm out. And you know what? If because that thing, the shh will remove the plantain, the plantain will not be done. The oil will not work. It will be a wasted time. It's shh, it's flashing. We cover it. We put it there. We say, stay here until you what? Until you cook. Sometimes all you have to do to fix your marriage is to stay there until he cooks. How do you know you're cooked? The pattern that looks yellow will not turn brown because it's cooked. When you see your mother that is married for 25 years, she has turned brown. Yeah, she has turned brown. She's matured. You see, if you're still talking, pe -pe 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 -pe, and as a man, your wife talk, you talk your own back. Your wife talk, you talk your own back. You are not cooked. Once you are cooked, when your wife talk, you say, honey, is that all? Okay, sorry, let's go. <laughs> because now you are what? Cooked. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Did I bless someone here? So, when your girlfriends are complaining, your friends are complaining, they're like, ah, ah, it's just six months in marriage now. That's the shh, stay. And you know, this worked powerfully. I, 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 in the US, one lady said to me, she married from Nigeria, and it was a long distance relationship. The week she was about to move abroad, she came to see me. She said, Pastor Malaji, I'm moving to the US to meet this man that we did the online. He said, what's one advice you give me? I told her, I almost mentioned her name, I don't want to mention her name. I said, whatever you do, stay for five years. Don't make any decision before five years. I called her. 
He said, that's the best advice I ever heard. He said, Pastor, the first two years, it was like, he said, he said, well, I remember you told me, stay for five years. He said, all the fire has come down now. We are here and we are okay. <laughs> Glory to God. Because when you marry, what you didn't know was inside you will come out. It's just pressure. So how do you build intimacy? Number one, number one, number one is a decision to try to trust and be vulnerable. And I'm saying this to men. Men, be vulnerable. Men, be vulnerable. It's a decision to try to trust and be vulnerable. The second way to build intimacy is this. It's a commitment to believe you can have intimacy. It's a commitment to apologize and forgive. You know I'm saying this to you because as I teach this today, you need to ask yourself, who do I need to forgive? It's not just for listening's sake. Who do I, how do I build intimacy? Because you can't build intimacy when you keep holding back things. You can't build intimacy when you cannot apologize. You can't, see, marriages that last for a long time learn to forgive a lot. You can't build intimacy when you start counting what you did in 1944, what you did in 1922. No, you can't, it's been that way. You're going to learn to apologize. Listen to me, if you are the one that is always right in your relationships, you are the one that is wrong. If you are the one that always sees the fault in your relationship, you are the one that has the problem. And the reason why is this, with all the fault you see, do you see your own fault? The Bible says before you remove the speck in your neighbor's eyes, remove the log in your own eye. If you want to frustrate yourself, focus on your partner's weaknesses and try to change them. You can't. All you have to do to do is to focus on your own strength and your own weakness and work on that. Glory to God. I said glory to God. The third thing, the third thing, if you want to build intimacy, is to invest intentionally. Remember what I said? I, remember what I said? Intimacy is not automatic. It's what? Intentional. Intimacy is not automatic. It's what? Intentional. How do you build intimacy? Invest. You must do it intentionally. You must have rituals. You must have things you do that makes you guys come together. It might be time you spend together. Let me give you some example. It might be, oh, every Every month we have a date night. It might be every year we go and do this together. There must be something you do that keeps the love going. The reason why is that life is very dangerous and boring and challenging. It drains the love you have. You just need to bring yourself together and bring her together and keep yourself out of the world. So you must invest intentionally you must invest intentionally you must invest time in together you must invest time together the second thing is this you must not just invest time together you must be interested in each other's things if you don't have interest in your partner's interest they will find somebody else more close they will find somebody else that will take their place in their heart and the reason why is that what brings someone close to you is their interest and ladies let me just give you a flashpoint Ladies, most guys, their number one need in a relationship is that they need it to be their guy. Most men want their women to be their guy. What's their women to be their guy? They want to be able to say, let's go and watch football together. And they're talking, 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 talking. And once that interest is not there, they will always find someone else that will have that interest. The same thing. So you need to ask yourself, what interest does my partner have that I can begin to work on? You know, ask yourself. Sometimes it's your wife. Your wife just lost the fact that, you know, your wife just lost the fact that you guys should watch movies together. Can you make that a ritual and you guys watch movies together? And build that interest. You know, uh, the other day, you know, I, I, I was listening to my friend speak and he was saying that my wife has changed though. I said, what do you mean? He said, when, were you? He said, when, I, when, when I was single, eh, when he said that, ah, you know, I like speed. My wife would just enter my bike, who would drive at full speed. He said, right now, I said, ah, I beg, I beg, I beg, I know that again. You know, but I mean, but what I love, is when I ask a good wife, the wife said that, well, it's not as if I don't do it, I do it once in a while, only that reduce because there are more responsibility. He said, Pastor B, 
we are two adults that are grown with four children. It's three or, is it three or two children? Is it with two children? He said, if something happens to us now, two of us at the same time, I beg, let him be doing his own speed. Let me stay at home and be praying for us. But I love the fact that the woman didn't like speed, but she was willing to take one step to what? To help. You need to develop interest. Buy a man your t-shirt as a woman and wear it and say, honey, I'm cheering for your club. <laughs> Praise God. Men, sometimes follow your wife shopping. Just make sure you forget your credit card at home. Because, listen to me, men want to follow their women shopping. The problem is this, that what the woman plans to buy and what she doesn't plan to buy, the day you follow her shopping, she will buy everything. She will buy for the future. Say, you will not be here next month. Let me buy in the future. So I say, honey, I'm following you today, but I, you will not believe it. I left my wallet at home. <laughs> what? They said transfer. <laughs> Leave your phone at home. Praise God. I said praise God. So you have to invest. I'm just saying we have to invest intentionally. When do we pray together? When do we eat together? When do we holiday together? When do we play together? And it's good to have some, so, you know, some people say, I love things spontaneous. Spontaneouses are good, only that they can be inconsistent. When you put a system around it, it helps you build rituals. Someone say hallelujah. Write the one you will do. Because all I just listen, write the one you will do. Hey, write the one you will do. Write the one you will do. Daniel, stop making your face like that. Write the one you will do. Just looking straight, write the one you will do. So you see, tell him the one that you like, you should be doing. Come on, give me the microphone. Take it to that area. <laughs> they think I'm doing. Give me the microphone. Yeah. Take it to that area. What, what interest are you going to start developing now? Yes. This is a practical class. Then I come to uh, Mrs. Adeniro. Yes, what interest will we start developing now? Yes. Quick, quick, where's the microphone? And the microphone in front here. Quick. Yeah. Give it to Daniel, yeah? Yeah. No, give it to Daniel. Can't you see Daniel there? Daniel, they don't know you. <laughs> yeah. What interest will you start developing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fine dining, I guess. <laughs> Fine dining, um, taking her out on the... Hold on, give it to your wife. Toyosi, is that what you like, fine dining, or you like other things? It's one of the things. What, what interest do you want to develop now? Honestly? Yes. I need him, I need him to be a little bit more interested in what I do. Okay. It took him a while to come to my new office space, and that didn't make me happy. I was so sad, and I've asked him to do a transfer to make up for that. So I'm anticipating the transfer for that by the grace oh, of God. Oh, hold on, Toyo. See, for him to come to your office space, how much would that cost? How much would that have costed him for him to come? Nothing, just time. I'm only saying that men sometimes what women want is not money. It's just come to my office space. What she's asking that, let me know you are supporting me. For the next one month, you'll be coming every week. <laughs> yes or no, give me the microphone. Uh, when you're around, when you're around. Yes, when I'm available. When you're, yes, no, no, yes. not when you're available. When you're around, when you're not acting, you'll be coming every week. I'll try my best. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But we'll start from the, you know, so, yes, yes, give it to the, yes. Where is Mr. Adenero? Give up your hand. Yeah. What interest do you need to support for your husband, yeah? This is what you need, what he needs from you now. What interest do you develop, yeah? Raise up your hand now. They can't find you. Fast car shows. It's called Formula One. <laughs> Give it to your husband. What do you think you need us to be interested in right now? I mean, she got it right, anyways. Um, Just to be watching the car. I mean, that's what I spend my time doing. I mostly watch um, fast car. Wait. 
car shows. Which is, which is awesome. So the thing is that I don't expect to like all the car show. Just like 10 minutes, like, hmm, this red one, you just name one or two names. Just let one or two names. Give me, give me, I like give me one name of the car, one of the drivers or the cars, something like that. Lewis Hamilton. What? Lewis Hamilton. Uh -huh. Don't be like, ha, huh, babe, ha, huh, Lewis Hamilton is Bado. You know, it, it would just be excited. Praise God. I said, praise God. All right. Amen. Wow. We, we need to close. We need to close. <laughs> praise God. Something you should stop. Something you should stop. So something that destroys intimacy. Stop judging your partner. Any small thing. <laughs> you can't pray. <laughs> I know in my mind the man that cannot pray. I know you can't pray. No. See, that is not, that is not challenging him. That's discouraging him. Let me say it. Women, listen to this. Every time you remind your husband of your weakness, he stays away from that thing. Because men love to stay in an area where they have strength and proficiency. You know what he wants to do? When he say he can't pray, when he did it, let us pray. He say, honey, can I do the prayers? Just step up for him. Stop, stop judging your partner. Any small thing. Ah, you did snow. You know, and many of you think these are jokes, but it affects self-esteem. You know, some of you have sharp tongue. And some of you know how to identify weaknesses, complaints. It comes naturally. I've seen people that are size plus, plus, plus. Churches always are size plus, plus, plus. <laughs> praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. And let me say something. So stop judging your partners. Because... Every time you judge your partners, they will retract from you. I'm not saying accept what they do, but I'm saying stop judging them. You know, Lord help me. If a woman, people say, why don't men talk? And I'll tell you the reason why today. Because when men talk, they process logically. I'll give an example. If your wife comes and tells you today, Man, I just lost money. He said, I really, yeah. The forty million I started the business, I've lost it into a fraud. It might say, yeah. It might just say, I, I made a mistake. It will just say, I made a mistake, because what he wants to do respond logically, but the woman responds what emotionally. So watch this. Babe, you lost the forty million. How? You explain the process. What are you going to do? He will say some more. But when you say, yeah, we don't have house rent. Ha, huh. what about this few school fees? Everything is gone. Everything, ha, huh. fire. Hey, my God, 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 my God. Ah, hey, hey, hey. And, I, I, and you took a loan at me. Ah, my God, ah, 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 ah. It's the man is just wondering, hey, my God, what kind of mistake did I make by telling this woman today? And the reason why is that he's hoping that because your emotions are too much for him to process at that time. So it shuts down. And that's why when things are getting heated between a couple, the man will say, I need some air. Because it's like a computer. The battery is very hot. It needs to shut down to process again. Praise God. So please, stop judging your partners. Then number two, stop ignoring your partners. And, you know, I was, I was confessing my sin in the first service. I said, sometimes something is wrong with my wife. I know some of them because of my wife, you see her, man, we just see mm -hmm. She had this torn look, then sometimes she will fold her lips, mm -hmm. and her leg will shake small, you know. And me, I don't want to have that discussion of whatever is going wrong, you know. But after passing my God conscience, I'm like, what, what, something is wrong. I just say, I just say that, ah, are you okay? Victory is mine as we sing God to Jesus. The reason why is that, that are you okay is not as if I want to know, but at least, are, are you okay? <laughs> and what we don't realize as men is that that gives us the opportunity to share deep feelings at deep feelings at that time. Praise the Lord. Have you learned something today? Let's start up and pray.
building intimacy building intimacy i wanted to pray for grace for adjustment that's what i wanted to pray for today i want to pray for grace for adjustment 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 and father in jesus name today we pray and we receive grace for adjustment for everyone that is single or married in this place we give you the praise and the glory in jesus mighty name we pray amen praise the lord hallelujah were you blessed this morning please you can go ahead and have your seats